Hi, I'm Lisa Adkins. You're about to see a video that I recorded for everyone, but for you, people who are getting ready for your PMI ACP, I wanted you to have a special introduction. I wanted to speak to you specifically because it's really possible to do Agile poorly. It's possible to implement it so that it's mechanical and just like every other project management methodology we've ever had before. And you know what? That's not what it's about. It's about something so much better than that. And to get that better, it starts inside each of us. It starts with us changing the belief system that we were brought up to believe. Because that belief system doesn't work with the way the world works anymore. But Agile does, and you can too. So good luck to you on your exam. Off to the video. Hi, I'm Lisa Adkins, and I'm a coach of Agile Coaches. And I'm also the author of this book, Coaching Agile Teams. I created this video you're about to watch because I wanted to deliver to you just a sliver of what's in this book. It's not even a secret. I put it in chapter one. But I think it's one of the most important things this book conveys. And it's about how we need to reprogram ourselves, our own beliefs, so that we can use Agile well and so that we can work with the change that's happening around us instead of against it. And to start, we're going to start with my story. Here we go. Even though I had about 15 years of managing projects by the time I encountered Agile, nothing prepared me for the power and simplicity of Agile done well. I didn't see it that way at first, however. When I was introduced to Agile, I didn't believe it would work. My mental model of projects was that of a big set of machines that work separately, but in lockstep. You know, each part producing a raw product to be ingested by another part of the machine and eventually spitting out a complete and finished product. In my world, project management was essential. It was serious business because project managers orchestrated the workings of the whole big machine. Everything about getting projects done was complicated, and I was convinced that it had to be this way. I couldn't imagine what a small team working together through plans of their own devising could possibly create. It just seemed too flimsy for getting real work done. Now, my first Agile team didn't have an innovative environment like this one to work in. This is a picture of Menlo Innovations. It's a full-on Agile environment. We weren't quite so lucky. We were in the middle of a huge corporation full of cubicles and bureaucracy, and we were jammed together in a tiny conference room. No matter. Even with that, just 30 days later after assisting a master Agile coach get that first team up and running, and after me being able to watch how the team worked together, I was convinced that my perceptions of Agile had been dead wrong, and that my mental model of project management was simply outdated. Not only did the Agile team start from scratch, an act that itself could take up to 30 days in my previous world, but they built an important piece of functionality that was immediately usable and started returning hard dollar value to the company right away. They had produced real work, the kind that the project management machine would have taken many months to spit out, and it was higher quality than what usually comes from the machine. And the best part? They did it all in 30 days. I want every new Agile team to have an experience like this team did, or even better. I want standing Agile teams to leverage Agile to the full competitive advantage it was meant to provide. You know, the kind that exceeds all expectations with innovative products delivered when they matter the most. If teams are to have these stellar experiences with Agile, we can't implement it this way. Instead, we have to go beyond the mechanics and challenge the very beliefs that the machine model is based on. We must replace these with new beliefs that work with the natural world instead of against it. Well, we have to reprogram ourselves. So let's look at some of those beliefs. Before we start the list, let me just say that before I encountered Agile and experienced it done fully and well, I used to believe all these things completely. Everything I did as a plan-driven project manager was based on these. I was taught this stuff. So let's look at them. We can plan the work and work the plan. That's what plan-driven management is based on. Here's another one. The plan gets more accurate as we go through phases of activity, requirements, design, development, etc. This is an idea, a belief, that it's supposed to happen this way. Completing tasks and delivering deliverables indicates our progress and the fact that we're delivering some value. Huh, isn't that interesting? Checking things off a list indicates 
delivered value. I used to believe that. Delivering on time, on budget, and on scope equals success. I did that. I did that a lot. I delivered on time, on budget, and on scope, and later I found out that that didn't really equal success. Here's another belief that we can lock down scope and we can handle all those discoveries later as change requests. And the final one, that controlling through the project plan is my job. As the project manager, that's my job is to control the whole project through that plan. So these are the underpinnings of plan-driven management and really the way most modern corporations are set up right now. But they don't turn out to be true. And in fact, they really work against nature. And generally, these underlying beliefs in plan-driven management are replaced with this new and simple fact. Gravity works. Rock climbers know this. They understand it. They accept it. They plan for it. I was made newly aware of this as I hiked past a group of rock climbers in action with all their gear deployed, ropes hanging down and people clinging to the side of a vertical rock face far above me. As I later made my way around their cars in the parking area, I noticed a bumper sticker and it said simply this, gravity works. Yes, it does. Rock climbers know this and plan for it. So do good agilists. I use this metaphor to illustrate that in our physical environment, in our natural world, some things are simply a given, constant, always present, undeniable. So too in our work environment, and here are some of them. Clients needs change, gravity. What the team can do is known only to them, and this changes over time, gravity. The world moves at an unbelievably fast pace and creates situations no one could have foreseen, and it's no one's fault gravity. Here's another one. You can't make a commitment on anyone else's behalf and expect committed behavior from them. Gravity. Agile accepts gravity and accommodates its pull within its very practices and principles. Dealing with gravity is built in. When you use agile with those plan-driven beliefs, you attempt to defy gravity. To do anything well in this complex, fast-paced world full of volumes of data that no one can get their arms around, this central idea must be wrestled with and accepted by you. Gravity works. So to accept it, let's do a little reprogramming, shall we? Let's see how we can replace these plan-driven beliefs with ones that work with gravity. Here we go. We can plan the work and work the plan. Eh, wrong answer. We can't do that. You know that as soon as we make the plan, the plan changes. And the worst case scenario is that we have two sets of books, what's really happening and what we tell the steering committee. So let's not do that anymore. Let's work with gravity instead and replace this idea. Planning is essential, absolutely. Plans are useless. They change as soon as we've made them. We need a way of working that helps us keep pace with change instead of working against it. Agile does that. Here's another idea. The plan gets more accurate over time as we flesh out the project through phases. No, that's not true. The plan doesn't get more accurate. The plan actually just gets more out of whack over time. What we need to do is work with gravity, and Agile lets us do that. The plan does get more accurate because what we use is the team's actual performance as the yardstick, as the measure of how much we can get done. It's based on how much this team in this situation on this project has done in the past, therefore how much we believe they can do in the future. It's very true. Here's another one we need to replace. Completing tasks and delivering deliverables are our progress and indication of value delivered. No, it's not. That's just checking stuff off of a list. Until we've actually delivered real end products to people who are using them, we don't have any value delivered. We don't have any way to measure our progress. Only delivered end products give that to us. Delivering on time, on budget, and on scope equals success. No, it doesn't. I delivered so many projects on time, on budget, and on scope, and I was trying to hide from the customers at the end. The clients were upset, and you know what? 
I had gotten to thinking that that's the way all projects ended. And it's not true. Delighted customers are absolutely possible. In fact, normal when they get the business value they need. They don't care if you end on time, on budget, and on scope. They care if they got the business value they needed when they needed it. That's what equals success. Here's another one. Scope can be locked down with later discoveries being handled as change requests. And don't you know we get penalized for those later discoveries? So no, this one doesn't work either. It doesn't work because it works against gravity. It works against reality. We are going to have later discoveries. There's no way around it. So instead, we want time and budget, which are really people, to be held constant. And we'll let scope flex, because guess what? That's what always flexes anyway, even when we try to nail it down. Here's the last one. Controlling through the project plan is my job. Boy, I took this as a sacred trust before. And no, guess what? It's not possible to control through a plan. It's actually not possible to control events or people at all. Instead, what we can do is release them into the safety of Agile, and that's how we get control. Agile has all kinds of safety harnesses built into it. All of the feedback loops, the daily stand-up, the sprint review and demo, the retrospective, all of those are the safety harnesses in Agile that let us release people into it, and thereby they get control. So Agile works with gravity, it works with reality. And it's far more than an alternate project management methodology. It's great for that. Sure, it's great for that. But that's also the weakest expression of it. Done most powerfully and simply, Agile focuses, on, focuses us on the critical projects to create. And it makes it possible for us to create them, one after the other, most important after most important in a way that allows us to meet our own high standard of excellence and pursue a vibrant personal purpose. Each person pursuing a vibrant personal purpose, but only when done well. And I know it can be done well. I've seen it. I've done it myself. Now I want you to go out and do it. And you really only have two choices. Do you want to be this guy, clinging to the side of that rock? Or do you want to be this guy, hooked into the safety of Agile, able to respond and able to deliver. So here's one final note for you. Recovering from these long-held but no longer useful beliefs is difficult work. It requires behavior change. It requires personal change. It's just one reason why teams, organizations, and leaders, maybe especially leaders, need agile coaches. And they need coaches who are well-equipped to help them through all of these changes. That's what I do. Through my work with the Agile Coaching Institute, I equip Agile coaches so they can help organizations get the great results we all heard about when we first encountered Agile. Those results are real when Agile is done well. I want you to have those results, and I want you to have the sense of achievement that comes with them. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for your time. Bye for now.